some baseball. What's on your mind? Can we can we talk about Shaq? Yeah, I um, think right. I think he's yeah he's going through a physical, and there's some other stuff that we have to uh, check some boxes on through through baseball. Um, but he's, a, he's an interesting cat. Say. What do you got? What do you, well, what do you, you know, we've we like like all. Uh, organizations, you know, you do homework on, you know, all players, right? I mean, you, you touch the scouts, uh, you touch the analytics, uh, you network people who've had him, uh, you know, coaches, teammates, what you know, the, you're, for lack of a better term, the due diligence. And, you know, you identify players and, uh, and then there's a, there's a period of time where you know the agents talk to the front office, and you know right off the bat it seemed like uh, there was an interest on both sides to you know pursue this, but uh, you know it's a it's a good arm, it's a good arm with a good fastball and a good breaking ball, with uh, I still think some upside potential to you know to realize uh, you know his his best stuff, so. And we're going to give him an opportunity. We're going to give him a really good opportunity to, you know, to be one of our starting pitchers. He's kind of cha- he's changed over time a little bit. Last year he um, he never missed a lot of bats until la- last year he started to. Yeah. Is there was there something? That well, I just you know, you know I know that you know that there's a little bit of talk about the you know the four seam fastball, this two seam fastball. I think you know we'll get with Chad and really. Uh, you know, talk through his best stuff. You know, I want to see him. I want to know what he has conviction in. You know, these types of things that, uh, you know, that make up a pitcher. And 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 you know, from, you know, how we coach him and and and, you know, his stuff. You know, we'll figure out the. You know, we'll we'll get there. So, but you know, we like the arm. You know, we like how he's built as far as the makeup. You know, we got some good insight from Clint on him. So, uh, and he's 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 in the mix. He's right in the mix. Yeah. So, what are we what are we talking about as far as the mix? Right in the mix. Well, if you look at our rotation, mm-hmm. right? You know, the four guys that I talk about a lot. Right. And then that that group of guys: uh, Cool, Feltner, Rollison, Lambert, Block. Want me to keep going? I mean, I can, I can go a little deeper into that. <laughs> but that's that's pretty good. Group yeah. there. He has experience though. So Ga- uh, Gudo, yeah. don't forget about him. Uh, he does have like Gudo. He has experience swinging both ways. So I mean, what is he going to be doing in camp? He's going to start. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to go a little bit more into just kind of the things you've heard about him from a makeup standpoint. And I rem- I do remember, I think I heard early on, you guys were really digging into the analytics there, but from talking to Clint, talking to people yeah. that have had him, one of the things, and I, I don't even know if Strip Matter had him you know, at some point. Yeah. That's where, that's, what you uh, competitor, uh, intense, um, you know, we'll leave it on the field, give it everything he has. Right, just you know, he's a he's a fighter. Uh, are there things that maybe you guys have seen that can get him just a little bit deeper in the games? It seems like when he's at his best. Well, um, again, I think that's you know we gotta we gotta figure out what doesn't enable that to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're conti- you know we're continuing to you know, a lot of it. You know, it's his comments back to us in our you know in our. You know, watching him over the spring and watching him pitch, and you know his, uh, you know his conversations with us. I mean, it's just, you know, these guys, uh, you know, players are not robots. We can't just get a player day one and say this is what you're going to do, and then it will help you get deeper in games. We got, we got, we got to get to know the player. Um, when you look at the group of guys you have there, you bring in a veteran like him and. Those guys, if all goes well, can continue to develop. Are you also looking for any other type of uh, maybe experienced starter types that aren't coming off injury? Maybe you can get in here on minor league deal. Are you still in that? I think we're we're always looking, Thomas. Always, every day. For for fits. Not super priority, but is that something? It's always a priority. Looking for we're always looking for players. You know, that's part of 
uh, you know, a front office's responsibility is to be on the lookout every day for players and how that fits our roster, how that fits our needs, all of that never stops. We have on a daily basis, whether it's agents, whether it's waiver wire, whether it's uh, free agency, I mean, we're looking for guys, always. And I'm not gonna give you any specific names. Um, with, uh, I was just gonna ask, so with, with, we talked yesterday about starting pitching and ramping it up. Is it more important to have starting pitching depth now than maybe in a quote normal? Yeah. I think so, uh, because in, you know, this is a, another unique situation, right? Uh, we were, all teams were, uh, you know, unaware of, of really what our players were doing, right, per protocol, both sides. Uh, and you've heard that publicly from other organizations and other players that have, you know, within, a, uh, you know, a couple of days here have come up injured and you heard the reports, well, I couldn't, you know, communicate with my trainer. I couldn't communicate with my organization. So, you know, we trust our play. I mean, I, you know, we know our guys, the guys that we've had. We know they're, they were working. They were working hard. They were doing uh, the right things. But still, you never know really what type of shape they're in until they get here and they start, they start going. So I think you're, I think teams are trying to just get a get ahead of that by signing players, signing pitchers, especially pitchers, because you don't know how it's going to unfold. And uh, because of the potential pitch count issue, not issues, but realities that uh, you're going to need some guys with some length, because our starters aren't going to be built up to a 110 pitches opening day. You know, we'll, we'll try to get them there. Uh, as quickly as possible within the restrictions of time and keeping always keeping uh, our first priority their health and their arms so it, it, it makes logical sense to to have you know guys who can go multiple innings guys who can uh, get to pitch counts out of the bullpen not, not sure exactly how the schedule falls, but do you keep either you go six out of the box, six on rotation, six man rotation, or do you probably keep not? A six no, starter probably not. Bullpen kind of? Well, we'll have a long man or two in the pen. I think we play five days in a row, then a day off. I th isn't that right? Don't play the Dodgers three and then Texas, Texas two, two, then a day off. So we're going to need five starters. Couldn't remember if there was a day off. You can ask anything you want, whether I answer it or not. <laughs> to the answer that you want, I'm not sure. You kind of, you, uh, correct me if my memory is off, but you kind of haven't had a like a capital L full time long man sort of really for a few years. Not not in the Chris Russin sense. Was it 2017? Well, I, I, I would I would throw uh, Shashin in there last year. That's who he did some multiple. Early in the year, he was he was our long man, and then he transitioned to more of a you know prominent role as a setup man, one inning guy, because of performance. And then Goudeau sort of took on that long man role. Uh, Gilbert had a little bit of length in him early, then we sort of you know took him to a more one inning type role. Uh, yeah, the the Russin years were were great, right? Very. Great performance in 17 and 18, for 17 especially. It must be really helpful, especially a coach would have something like that. Very, very, very important. Oh my gosh. But again, we've been, again, I don't want to, you know, go back too far, but our starters have been pretty good as far as length. And if, if you look at the, the window that they've been here, they're, Innings pitched, their length has been pretty good compared to the other 29 teams. And even in your division, even with the Dodgers, they've been right up there. Yeah. Them innings pitched. And yeah. So, uh, so the expectation is, and it, it's their expectation now too. I mean, they're not, you know, gone on the. I mean, yeah, they're not 
young pitchers anymore. I mean, they got five years of service time. I mean, Gomber's a little bit less, but you know, Kyle, Herman, and Antonio. Who are, who are we talking about as long man candidates? Yeah. Gudo. Yeah. Uh, Rollison. Uh, Feltner. Probably not. Probably not. Feltner probably keep him starting. What about Sheffield? Uh, Sheffield can go. I mean, he's got a little starter in his past, but you know, we had to, you know, we had to monitor him last year a little bit, okay. right? Rule five, we had to make sure we get him through, and then he got injured. But, um, but there's some. Yeah. Was the one that went Peter in. probably wouldn't, you know, coming off Tommy John. Peter would probably not fall into that category as a reliever. You know, we're still gotta, you know, monitor Peter. And I'm oh, sorry. So when tie you, block. Okay. He's got some length. When you when you come into these decisions, are you are you at all um, messed up or hampered by the the different by the later schedule and how the minor league schedule works? And are you just gonna? I don't. I don't <coughs> no, I don't. I don't think the minor league schedule affects us. You know, they start. You know, the only thing that affects us there is that supposedly they break camp like April 1st, you know, but we'll keep a lot of those guys back here, okay. right? I mean, that's that's sort of where it gets a little tricky, but that's easy, right? I mean, like the Albuquerque team, you know, is scheduled to break April 1st. They're still supposed to start like April 5th. Okay. And they start on the road in Oklahoma City. So, you know, they're going to go to Albuquerque and, you know, find their apartment and get their stuff in their lockers and then fly to Oklahoma. But we'll keep guys back here to play okay. for us and, you know, pitch. So, but their schedule doesn't really affect us. Okay. Do you have to adjust the pitching plan again with the short and spring training where the first starts you might see during the season could only be four or five? Yeah, days? yes, for sure. But again, we won't have, we don't have the time. To, to really build those guys up to six innings and 90 pitches like you you know there's a progression over a normal six week spring like we talked about the six weeks are for, are for the really the you know the 10 starting pitchers okay. five in big leagues five in triple a that is that is needed where you know history and experience have, have told us that that's what it takes to truly do it right and that's based on those guys also doing their work prior to the first day of spring training, you know. Um, j just to clarify, Sheffield, is he in the long man category or not really? I, I, I wasn't sure. Well, I mean, <clears throat> a, a long man for me is a guy who could throw, you know, up, up to three innings. He's probably not in that. If that's how, it depends on how you define it. Okay. Can he go two? Yeah. Hey, um, one of the, on a different subject, you, you guys all said on pitching. Yeah. Sam Hilliard, what we saw at the end of the year, and then I saw some swings in the Dominican Republic. Is it his time now to show who he is, uh, that he is who Yeah, he I, you know, I, like, there's a lot of upside to Sam, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, he he is really earnest in trying to make some some swing adjustments. You know, and some swing decisions. Uh, you know, that's his. That's his goal. That's his challenge. And uh, and we all think he can do it. You know, him especially, right? If you talk to him, I'm sure you'll talk to him, and you know, he'll sort of reiterate the same things. But you know, he figures to be a a guy that we expect to play well and to I mean to to be offensive. And, it's just, it, and he just needs incremental improvement. Doesn't need to take a huge leap. Just improve. The, the and just continue to improve. The adjustment he made last year with his hands during the season and then started striking balls, that, that kind of showed that he's comfortable more with the swing. Yeah. So it doesn't come down it's to all, the decisions. It's all repetition, right? The comfort yeah. level. I think he's getting there. I mean, that was intended to shorten the swing, shorten the shorten the path to the ball because uh, he still has he has still have math he has to have, he still has uh, massive power even with a shorter direct path and not a bigger longer swing to generate the power uh, but again swing decisions uh, and you know balls in the strike zone 
put them in play. You know, put them in play with authority. That's the, you know, in simple terms, that's sort of the goal. And defensively, heck of an athlete. Center field, do you yeah. see him? Play all three. Play all three. Right. Uh, but our need is center. Yeah. Right. And he's very capable in center. Long ranging strides, can, can range and go get balls. It's athletic, like you said. Continues to improve. And when he's not in the center, you can always be H with him and if the ripples is that good. Yeah, you can, but you I would think that when he plays he's in the field. Okay. He's young, he's athletic, he, he might not need a day of off his feet. You know what I'm saying? Right. We can do that with other guys. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Yeah.